Hey, good morning, Ready to All Podcast. This is a different one. Hey, I've got a really good friend with us right now. And uh, look at we're twinsies. Oh, no, we're triplets. We're, we're yeah, triplets. Oh, Tristan Tristan's got his too. We didn't even <laughs> we didn't even plan. That's that's almost sick. That's awesome. So William Lahr is our guest today. We're going to talk about small business, big thinking. And uh, he's a good guy, man. He's he's a punching bag for the group of friends because he's so much fun. Uh, but nobody else can punch him except for us. Uh, we're protective over him, but he's a great human being. It's an honor to have him here. Uh, and there's there's a reason why we're smoking cigars. Oh yeah, is this is kind yeah. of our thing. You know, it's our bro code, man. It's you know, it's it's so we're gonna get into that. But today, before we launch into it, I really want to kind of we're gonna do some small talk. We're gonna introduce some other special guests that we've got here. Um, and uh, w- there's a lot of us enjoying a good cigar right now. And this is a good cigar. Right <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the let, shop- let- Hot boxed. <laughs> luckily, luckily for me, I'm not partaking in that secondhand smoke today. Yeah, well, it's don't worry because we're going to corrupt you and it's going to be firsthand smoke uh, here, here, here before you're dead. Be cool. uh, so, hey, today we're going to talk about, again, small business, big thinking. And I think this is going to be a cool interview because this dude, uh, William, started out like many of us did with not a lot. And, you know, he had a, he had a job and he was kind of tired of shit and wanted Pretty to kind of do his own thing, right? And, <laughs> I've really had a front row seat of watching this guy. We made a plan yesterday, sure you did. know, just sit down and just talked about what he could do to, to really become the local influencer within uh, the Miami market. Um, and so we're going to do that. But before we do, we, we're going to get these other characters up. Come on, jump behind us real quick. We're going to have them introduce this, our five-day course. Guy, and, man, we're having a ball. They they got done with Diane yesterday, so they, they, they got that side of it. But today and tomorrow, they're getting a whole other level. And so we'll just go through and let's start. We'll start right here and just I'll get out of the way. Introduce yourself and where you're from. And then what cigar, what, 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 uh, if you're smoking or not. I'm not sure which one it is. It's my uh, father. Corey Taylor. I'm from McMinnville, Oregon. I run CT Detailing Services. All right. Cool. Name's Dawson from Miami, Boys and Blue Detailing, one of the owners. Brad Chang from Miami as well, Boys and Blue Detailing. Awesome. Um, Nick Vera, I'm from Miami, top tier detailers. I'm Stephen Clark. I'm one of the interns here. I uh, run Carology LLC based out of Texas. Cool. cool. Right on, guys. Right on. So, so we uh, let's jump into this. And again, this has been it's it's cool to get to know these guys. And it's I've met every single one of them. It, that's I don't know if that's ever happened in a five day course Before where I've known. Class. Yeah where I've known every single one of them. And so it's been fun. Um, we're going to dig in and start uh, sanding on a Porsche tomorrow um, that is pretty carved up. And uh, Porsche paint can be a little um, challenging at times, especially this color, because it's hard to see what we're going to have to dive into. And then uh, we got a lot of stuff today, all the wet work and stuff. Oh, yeah. But it's going to be busy. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to have a good day. But until then, William Lara um, is – I'm going to do a little pre-introduction with him is that I'm really proud of this dude. Uh, I don't tell him that enough, but I've watched what he's done. You know, he's got a cool wife. Um, I think what he did that, that was really, 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 really cool. Um, ho- hold on one second. Hey, let's wait and do that later. Cause it, yeah, it's going to take us completely off. Off. It already did. Um, he, he really took and started this thing. Um, from his bare knuckles and and just it was an old-fashioned bare knuckle fight bar fight right yeah, little do people know <laughs> right and 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 so um to watch him come up through the ranks and to really do what he's done is that i'm really proud of him and i think just that his outlook he's always um you know he's a combination of smart ass smart uh, he take he takes a beating from us he gives it back to us uh, but I will tell you this: the reason why we're starting out with cigars, this is how our relationship started. Oh yeah, yeah. and so it's uh, we'll get into that. But um, and so with that being said, is um, let's talk about uh, our first cigar. Oh man, um, that was. Hey, which one are you going from mine? Uh, I think this is mine. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to. We're, ha- we're having. We're having some. No, I didn't lip mine. Yours got a lip mark. I haven't lip mine yet. So oh, <laughs> it's good. To, it's good to go. Um, that Did was. You guys get coffee. Everybody got coffee. Yeah. yeah. Is that a good mix or what? Cigars awesome. and coffee. You, you were actually the one that turned me on. That that was um SEMA, 2017. You know, I bought you the cigar. You're like, okay, I'm leaving. I'll see you later. He's like, you're not gonna smoke it with me. 
And then we were like, oh, let's buy some coffee. I'm like, oh, this guy's crazy. Like, what? who drinks coffee? I'm thinking whiskey or like, mm-hmm. you know, cognac or something. And I was probably, I've been doing that ever since. Yeah. yeah. No, coffee, awesome. coffee and cigars go really it's good together. Awesome. It's uh, Cuban, a Cuban uh, friend of mine that uh, Alonzo down in um, Eber City, Florida is the one that got me onto this. Mm-hmm. Cuban coffee and cigar. He had a really nice high end cigar mm-hmm. shop down there. Mm-hmm. And if you guys haven't been there, you guys are from Florida. Uh, we had a lot of people from Florida. He brought them in. And so these are all people that he does business with and that we've met. And so, but have you guys spent time down there? Yeah. Eber City? It's pretty yeah, cool. Tampa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. You know, a lot of people, it's the, kind of the cigar capital of America, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, it. Uh, we used to go down there and have Cuban coffee and cigars and come out of there buzzed as hell. I mean, just just going 300 miles an hour. Yeah. And so. It's a good combination. It is. It yeah. is. So we, we shared that cigar together and then we shared another one down at mobile tech remember sitting out on the patio oh yes remember that yes. what was what cigar was that one that was your buddies um that was from casa Cruz cigars that's one of my the, favorites the, those are actually one of my favorite cigars yeah, yeah well I you smoke to. a lot of those yeah for sure yeah you, really you, that's a that's a good cigar yeah and they're good company i'm trying to cut back you know? like, me instead, too. Of, instead of every day it's like no nah. uh, once a week i, I have <laughs> no i don't even do it that i do it oh. probably i only probably smoke maybe i don't know maybe maybe i don't even average one a month they, they just have quality cigars Mm-hmm. They really do. It's just mm-hmm. for the you can't beat it. So are you a, a hole punch guy? There's a V V cut right so now. So I do a double V cut, which is a crown cut. Yep. So it, it allows me to get a good um flow on it. So this is pretty honored. You guys got a really good cigar too. I thought he's going to be bringing you guys cheapy ones. <laughs> is that I got more for? I us did too. think of it. I got, I got yeah. I got more of us. So these are my father's. It's a great cigar. Yeah, they're you know I can go be you know. Uh, you know, I smoke other cigars, but when it comes to like my father, especially Casa Brother cigars, I just I stick to what I like and I've been like that ever since. You know, the last cigar I had, I was in an officer's training up at uh, uh, San Luis Obispo Slow, Camp Slow. Uh, and a couple couple of the guys went out in the parking lot Saturday night. We we're just mm-hmm. about done with the course. We had a couple of good cigars, and it was a good cigar. And uh, um, when the guy comes out, he says, uh, Hey, let's I'll treat you to a nice cigar. It was my father's. Yeah. And I was like, Oh. Hell yeah. Isn't that, isn't that good? They're based in Smooth, Miami, too. Man. They are. Yeah. And now there's a My Cigar. This is turning into a cigar. We, we just need to reach. We got we to gotta rename the podcast, you know? Yeah. Right. Uh, I'm the good cigar, for that. The Cigar yeah. Podcast. Yeah, and then we'll get Chris cigar, going in his bedroom. We'll get him out in his garage with the cigar, you know? <laughs> we'll, we'll get him one of the little old candy, the candy ones that you can blow the candy out the end. <laughs> you know? That'll be funny. Mm. You guys have that when you're kids? Do they even do, do, do cigarettes? Yeah, yeah, little oh, cigarettes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I never touched this. I've never had a cigarette in my mouth. He's gonna want the ice cream truck. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, the ice cream yeah, truck. Ice cream truck. Yeah, Boy, yeah. would that be like? Could you imagine that today? <laughs> you know, it was like, wow, they're probably sponsored by Marlboro too. We just didn't know it. You know, we're probably just hooking a bunch of kids off their ice cream truck on on cigarettes. You know, <laughs> at a young age. And so, well, that's cool. So let's let's dive into it. And Chris, I want you to jump in too, because you know your mafia. Um, you know, you came through right now, the senior intern, Stevens, Stevens, the intern, your senior intern, coming back to help these guys grow. Um, you've progressed, you know, you started out, did you start out with a million dollars? Man, I, I remember I started the business in 2014, you know, with a plan of, as a side gig and turned yeah. to like, oh shit, like, I really like this. And I've always wanted a detail, right? And, you know, one thing led to another, and you know, I started off with one paycheck coming through and fifteen hundred dollars in the four hundred one k. That's all I had. Really, I didn't have nothing else. That anybody else here turn in any four hundred one k to start your business up? Uh, I did a little bit. <laughs> I took some out, and it wasn't much, but you know, yeah, but I had to cash out. <laughs> no, you had to, right? I, had to. <laughs> I took, I took, I took a little bit out, and I was like, okay, this is gonna hurt because you got to pay a lot of taxes on it, right? When you pull that out, and I told Diane, I said, you know, I, I pulled out. Um, I started up and I, I started with 20 bucks and I didn't really want to, you know, that was my retirement, right? That was, I worked hard, like, mm-hmm. right? I mean, so I didn't want to really touch that. But then when I saw Diane actually came to me and she's like, look, man, you got to pull that money out. You're on fire and you just don't have enough equipment and enough products. And it's taking a lot longer, man, dude, go pull it out and go. And so that's what really launched us too. Mm-hmm. And so, okay. So you get, it's a side hustle. What are you doing at that time? For work, I was working in the in the retail corporate world. You know, I, I it was a point in time where I had a, a supervisor or superior that you know I was gonna say a few things that was probably gonna get me fired. 
right? Um, I can only hold so much, right? And that, that was my plan B, right? Like starting the detailing business and pressure cleaning. Eventually, when I saw the potential in it, right? I've always wanted to do this. I was like 14 years old, right? I've always liked cars. I always wanted to make money because unfortunately, my parents, you know, couldn't afford the best things. You know, I always had to do that. And, you know, things started picking up. And I told my wife, hey, I don't know when, but it's going to come to a point in time where I'm going to have to decide whether I want to stay working or I'm going to start the business. Mm. And like literally like three months later, really, I was like, okay, yeah. Well, let, let me tell you, I met your wife for the first time down where at his event, right? We hadn't met. I heard so much about her. She's powerful, dude. Oh, she's awesome, man. She's powerful. I mean, she is a powerful woman. Um, she's It's kind of like Diane. When she kind of first walks up, you kind of pee yourself a little bit. It's like <laughs> you just know you're going to have your balls in oh, your yeah, throat for sure. if you say the wrong thing, yeah. right? She's my, my biggest supporter, my biggest critic too. So mm -hmm. you're not dead. She got right on the bandwagon ragging on you. Oh, yeah. I mean, she just joined me right right away. Man. I mean, she was just hitting him, you know. And honestly, I didn't know it was that small until I talked to your wife. You know? <laughs> <laughs> she he takes it, man. I love him, and he, but he gives it back to me. He gives you know, it back to me, sometimes you know? I don't like it big. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She whiz. <laughs> you, you, you guys uh you guys went there huh do we have a rated r symbol on the mm. no nah, we no. don't care right now we don't care. <laughs> hey, i guess we should have put the parental guidance up a little bit before this one and so you know so that first time in 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 so yeah i it was t difficult for me when i left my job is i actually had mm. a job i loved it and i loved my boss my boss taught me michael scott the dude just taught me so much in, in the five years I was with the company and he promoted me. I mean, just through the roof, right? I mean, he just believed in me. I felt guilty leaving him. You know, it was that good of a relationship, but I just felt like a hamster, you know, and I've said this before, getting on the wheel and, you know, I'd run my little hamster legs off and ding, the bell would ring and I'd go get my little hamster food and ding, I'd back on the little hamster wheel and then ding, go get my little, you know, my little hamster water and you know, suck a little water out of the tube, ding, I'm running back, you know, and I was just like, dude, I, could, I can't see myself doing this for 30 years, you know, I mean, making good money, I mean, I had a great bosses, I was learning, I was promoting, they, they, they gave me raises through the roof, I had a company car expense report, was traveling, all these cool things a young person would love, and I just, I felt like I had handcuffs on. I mean, like, like I wasn't happy. You know, and, and I learned through life, no matter what you do, just do what makes you happy mm -hmm. and everything will come, will fall into place, you know? So, um, you start up, you go mobile. Yeah. Okay. And then I remember, oh, when did you move into your current location? Um, actually right before COVID. November, yeah, two years ago. November 19th. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I remember you calling me up and saying, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. I was a hundred percent behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, 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 it's. It's it's a reality shop. It's not big. It's not fancy. I mean, parts of Miami where you're at, it's not cheap to get a shop. Oh, right? no, and it's, it's probably. Yeah. I mean, how hard is it to find mm -hmm. a shop? Very hard. Well, it took me six seven months just to find that one. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh oh, I'm not sucking enough. I got to suck a little more. <laughs> uh, and so you're gonna you're gonna light it for me. It so is. now, so let's talk about that. So that transition, you know, I'm a big, I'm a, and 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 I just agree and add a narrative to this i really think that when people move into a shop is that day i got it thank you though Steve, you're such fine, a you're, you're just such a sweet oh you want yours Lit. Yeah, you want I'm me to light it for it? come here steve i'm gonna light yours for you come here that's the only reason i came back come on. To see put it in your mouth mm -hmm. Let's put it in your mouth. get any screenshots no 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 get in here so no, you got, no, i'm gonna light that's it for the, you part of the process. okay now suck it hard okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not puff. on my knees. Come on, puff. puff. And this is what you call puff. a podcast with William puff. Moore, right? Puff. Okay, there you go. So <laughs> if I had known you were doing this, I would have worn my uh, white hair. <laughs> Chris is never going to let us have cigars again on the podcast, ever. <laughs> um, no. I believe that you have to have six to 12 months of of saving saved up that covers your not just your shop, but your home expenses when you start a shop up. Um, did you have did you have enough finances saved up? Were you nope. in good shape? No. I, you know, I, I was, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I was, right, like, okay. you know, I, I cut it close, but you know, I had a, I had a dream. I had a vision and you know, I had the plan. There you go. Right. You know, I, I just didn't depend on detailing. I did, you know, I had other sources of income that was helping me do that. Right. That I have six months now. I probably had like two of that. Right. Right. And, and, and your wife's there. She's got a good career. Right. I mean, yeah. 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 So she was your backup. So, okay. I go with that. I did kind of the mm -hmm. same thing. 
Um, I won't say I regretted it later, but it made it tough. I know? mean, it, it was, you know, I, I bet it on myself. And, you know, it, it's not to sound arrogant or not, but I, I just don't lose when I do. Yeah. I just, I, there is no plan B for me. No. I it's plan A or nothing else. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. And so you went for it. And then you start transitioning. I mean, I, I watched you, and this is kind of what I, I kind of want to get across is to people is that, um, oh, look at this. There's a picture of your shop up when we were down there. Oh, that's awesome. And let me yeah. tell you, this photo doesn't do his shop justice. I mean, it's it's a cool look at these guys. You got to come over here and look at it. You guys were there. And so this this photo does not do his shop justice. Oh, yeah. And, and I want to tell you is that, I, it was one of the best of you know I I wanted to come down and support you. We mm -hmm. went to Mobile Tech, we went to yours, yeah. we went to Mars. That little shop, you did such. You and your wife did such an outstanding job on that shop. How many square feet do you have? Um, twelve fifty. And so very real. It's not mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's you had that that whole wall done. You know, kind of with a a Miami flavor to it. Mm -hmm. And from somebody that's not from Miami. When I walked in, you guys probably go in and you see it every day. For me to walk in there, I was blown away. I mean, I, I mean, I've seen pictures of it and everything else, but when I walked in there, I was like, "Oh, oh, holy shit!" It, it was that. It was just clean. The floor is clean. Everything had a theme. It was you. It, you could tell mm -hmm. you put you put what you liked into it. And do you what? what like when you guys first walked into it, what what did you guys think? What was your opinion? Uh, like you said, I liked it. it was clean. Everything was organized, you know, um, and everything was clearly displayed. So there's no guesswork to be like, oh, let me see what's behind right. there. You Absolutely. Know, you can see all the products. His little store mm -hmm. up front is freaking, dude, it, you nailed it. I mean, you freaking nailed it. So walk us through. God, man. I call it the Fortune this 300. Good. Was that all you <laughs> or was your, did your wife help you set up? Uh, no, she, yeah, she helped me. You know, like the, the most important part that I appreciate so much of her is, Man, she just let me do what I had to do. Nice. She believed in me. She, you know, she, you know, did she, you know, have doubts and questions? Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? But it's like when I quit, my, when I told her I wanted to quit my job to start my business, like, you think you could do it? I'm like, I don't think so. But I got no other option. You know? You could see it in her. I think she's a realist. Oh, yeah, 100%. You know, and she's smart. And she'll, I think, here's the good thing of having, you know, a powerful partner you know is because there's a lot of females that are going to be listening to this or so, a soundboard is you know if when you have somebody that you know it's not a negative nancy but they'll say okay hey here's what i'm seeing here's what i'm worried about stand up mm -hmm. take note to that but also use that as your fuel you know you've got steven sitting there shaking his head because mm -hmm. his wife is a freaking can i say it she's you know she's cpa um Holy shit. I don't take cash anymore because of it. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's good. You know, he said he doesn't take cash anymore. Is really when you want a legitimate business, you can't do that shit. You want everything. And like I said, I mean, in my early days, did I? Yeah. Even today, I mean, I like to have a little stash of cash. So I like it when somebody pays me a little something in cash. But my, my business is 99.999999 uh, transparent. And my, my account won't sign off on it. I mean, my good accountant, <laughs> if she hears me go in a direction, she's like, either shut up. Or let me change your mind on this. And so, you know, that that's that's a good account, not a bad. I don't want to go to jail because of my accountant. Oh, now, your wife no, might no. want you to go to jail. You know, you're little. You're a fun size dude in prison. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know anymore. I need a new job title being here. Mm. No, it, in, the, in all reality, though, is that it is kind of a 24-7. But she and I, she's got a fat corporate job. She's not yeah. just a CPA. But she's going part time to thankfully be able to watch the kids more often. Live a little bit of that side of the life. Finally, yeah, and you know, and then go back or stay. Yeah, not the same company. But anyways, it's she won't sign off on stuff for me because a she can lose her license. Absolutely. And the minute you pierce, that may be good advice for people. The minute you start messing around with an LLC and pierce a corporate umbrella, they come up your personal stuff. Oh, they do. And let me tell you, that's a good point. Is that kind of going off top a little bit? But excellent point. Listen, an LLC or an S corp or C corp isn't going to totally protect you guys. You guys break the law. Is that, or or even if you've got, let's say that you're 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 in a lease, and you've got somebody that's the property owner that's, we won't even go there, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, let's, let's not, go, not go there. Let's not go there. Yeah, let's not go there. Okay. So so even if you've got a property owner that's like like a little iffy, uh, it comes down if they got a powerful attorney, they're gonna they're gonna pierce whatever you got. Now an S corp and a C corp might be a little harder for them to do, but an LLC, they'll rip through that thing like you you. It, they'll make it. 
they'll you'll you'll be a solid piece of cheese, and when they're done, you'll be Swiss cheese. They're gonna knock holes all over you. You, you know what was good? You know, also, like, there's you know like you know obviously you know going issues you know with my landlord or whatnot. But there's a website called Just Answer. You pay sixty dollars a month. Yeah, and you have legal attorneys that you can ask questions to. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Say that again. What is it? It's called Just Answer. Wow, that's cool. Dot yeah. org or dot com. Or um, mm -hmm. I'll I'll post that information on the on the thread now. Yeah, we'll put it over on your social media or something. Yeah, like I'll that do that. Follow it too. I'll do that. That's good information for everybody. So, so now you um, so you you go in your shop. Let's back up even past that. So you, you and I meet. There's an instant can I, di I dug your personality. I mean, it's just, I don't know. We just always got along, right? And, um, you know, it's, 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 I, I feel that, you know, you're how old are you? 30 what? I'm 33. Okay. So I say this, man, this is cool. This year we had a lot of 33 year olds. I woke up when I was 33 and realized that I wasn't shit. I was doing good, but I wasn't shit. You know why? Because Jesus was 33 and we're still talking about it. Does that make sense? And I know that's kind of weird, but I just woke up and I was like, dude, I ain't shit. It kind of humbled me. You know, I was like, I ain't shit. You might think you're shit, but you're not shit. That dude's still being talked about. You know, whether whatever your feeling is, whatever faith you are, it's there. And so it's such a freaking cool age, man. I just, one of my favorite years. And I think it was because of that connection, you know, with faith and, and knowing that, you know, he was 33 and, and that it, I don't know, it just humbled me that year. You know, it's just such a cool year. When do you turn thirty-four? August. Okay, so like, go balls to the walls until then. <laughs> Seriously, because thirty-three is just—I'm telling you, it's not by chance. It's a powerful year. He's a bad influence, just because you're watching my wife. Yeah, yeah, no, thirty. <laughs> go balls to the wall the rest of the year because I gained so much traction that year. I'm not kidding you. I don't know why. I, I don't know. It's just that the connection, and then the next year I gained traction was thirty-nine. When I turned thirty-nine, I freaking gained traction. And then, and then, and then the forties were fixing the thirties, you know, my whole forties fixed everything I'd screwed up on the, in the thirties. Yeah. And then the fifties have been a ball dude. Cause I don't give a shit what people think about me. I don't give a shit what, what I just don't, I just don't. I mean, I care if they're close to me, but if it's somebody I don't know and they like, they post something, hate, you know, hateful. Uh, I just had somebody post something smart ass and I was like, son, come on out and I'll school you any day. And by the way, your mom taught you manners at some time, use them. And that's all I came back with. And I just, the end. And I don't care. I, I don't know if he followed up. I don't care if he followed up with anybody. The dude means nothing to me if he's going to be rude. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I just put it out there. And that was one of the few I just didn't delete because I was more upset that somebody just was rude. It was just like, dude, learn some manners. Don't come on and say something rude. rude. Be, stop being an asshole on somebody else. You want to be an asshole, be an asshole on your own. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's jump through. Hey, check, uh, check this out real quick. You know, I've always been told that 33 is kind of a, a special age and number two. Um, so I, while we were sitting here, I Googled it, it said, and uh, I came up with this. It said the number 33 is a master number and resonates with the energies of compassion, blessings, inspiration, honesty, discipline, bravery, uh -huh. and courage. Uh, didn't know that. Didn't know it that. Says, it says the number 33 tells us that all things are possible, and it also symbolizes guidance. We got it. Wow. Okay. So what's the double? So double that. I got to wait until I'm 66 for another year <laughs> like that. Holy shit. I'll wait. Um, you know, <laughs> I'll wait. And so 33, dude, you just, you know what? And you're a practical joker in the group. We have a, we have a thing. We're at Air Force One. I kid you not. This is going to be a lot of fun memories. The first year is at Air Force One. We're taking our team photo. And I'm, I'm like, okay, everybody look at the camera. And, and we take a picture. And whoever's taking the picture, and everybody look at the camera. And here's William. So every, here's the camera, and here's William. And so we had to take it. I said, William, look, look. Oh, oh, hey, dude, like get a squeaky toy. You know, we were taking the picture. And so the next year, did we bring one? Did we bring a squeaky toy or something like that? That was funny. Oh, that was so funny. it was awesome. And so, you know, we love to – the whole group plays with you. We have fun with you. Um, So now you transition your shop. Well, were you going to detail out of there, or was it going to be what you have it now? Because explain what it is. Explain what it is now, and then we're going to go back a little bit. Okay, so so now you know the plan was to you know be able to still detail, which I, I not as much as I want to now, but you know it just shifted into being a supplier. It just it got that busy with all the other stuff I do within the industry. It was like, ah, uh, I don't got time. No, and <laughs> you've got a great relationship. So 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 what trend? So I I remember watching this. You're constantly sending me pictures. Hey, what do you think of this? You're 
and, and I, I got to tell you, that's what's cool about William is, is that I'm definitely old enough to be your dad, you know, but you're constantly respectfully, you, I share my opinion with you. And sometimes you didn't agree, but you never, you never threw it in my face. I could only give you, make your suggestions, but the, the one thing that William came back to, even if you didn't agree with suggestion, suggestion, he kept coming back. And I saw you do that with other people that were, were wiser. And wisdom's tough, man. You can be smart. You can be clever. You can be wise. It's really tough. It's really tough to be wise. But here you were at a young age going to myself and other people that had some of that wisdom that had been there, and you're getting their input. How much did that help? Priceless. I can't. You know, I have guys like you, but then you, I have guys like like Justin Lobato, Mark Elliott, Kyle Clark. It's like uh, all the wisdom and, and value they bring. You can't put a price on no. that. Hundreds no of years. No, there's no way. There's Hundreds no of way. years. And even people your age that are in your same, they're coming up through. I love seeing you converse with people, your your customers that come in, mm -hmm. your different people, and you're constantly hearing them out. I noticed that when I was down mm -hmm. there. You hear them out. And I think that's really important. So many times we, we open our mouths, but we don't open our ears. And I saw you taking with people, opening your ears, then opening your mouth. And I think that's really important. And, and I appreciate it because uh, I've improved throughout the years. I'll be honest with you. I wasn't like that. You know, well, none of us were. <laughs> none, none of I us just were. like to talk to you. Yeah. I remember my grandma saying, you better not do that. And I go do it. I, I, just, I ended up in a boy's work camp. Yeah. You know? I, I like just feel like cleaning it's, up goat shit. It's like, you know? it's like building the relationship, you know? Like, mm -hmm. It's more than just product. It's more than just detail. It's just building the relationship and life period, you know? Yeah. It's uh so – Trench is new level. Tell us, what's the journey like? So you start out, you don't start out with much, okay? Nope. Um, now looking back, what year was that? So I started the business um, 14. I quit my job September 21st of 2016. So take me through take me through the struggle to yours. This, I want to get your opinion. Those hardest years when you're like, wow, holy shit, man. Not that I ever said, am I going to make it? But deep down in my soul, I was going, am I going to make it? Right? I mean, you, you question yourself every once in a while. Not doubt yourself. Difference. Question. Doubt. I had multiple days that I wanted to quit. Okay. Now, looking back at those days that you wanted mm -hmm. to quit, you've made it through this journey, and you're going to have more of those, mm -hmm. you know, because things, the only thing that changes is you grow and you succeed are the challenges. Looking back at, what, what do you look at? Do you regret those days? Do you hate those days? Or do you get pleasure in thinking about those days and go, wow, that, that, was, the, that was the grassroots days? Those were their days, man. Like, you know, when I started detailing, you know, I was like, okay, cool. Start off as a side hustle. I got into detailing. I drove a van to work for a year. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was like, why is this guy, like, mm -hmm. in this position still driving like a cargo man? I was like, yeah. maybe, right? Yeah. So then, you know, it's just one thing led to another. You know, I started off in a pickup truck that I just found online for sale, which is I'll probably end up getting it back. No, don't buy it. No, no, yeah. don't buy it. No, no I have no, to. No, I you have don't. To. No, you don't. Um, but it, you gotta it spend was that just, money to improve your business. You know, it was one of those that it, it just it made me better. It made me stronger. It made me wiser. You know, you're gonna have mistakes through you know through the process, right? Right. You just gotta learn from those mistakes and and just continue, right? He was like, oh, we have so many problems and we have problems and problems, but the thing is, the longer it comes, the more problems you have. It just gets easier for you to deal with it because you have a solution for Amen. it. Amen. Well you said. Know? I look back at the days of going up. I've said this often, and I think it was because my pride was hurt of the days going up to the fuel pump in my first van, which was a big 16-foot box van, like a U-Haul van, and not knowing if my ATM card was going to have enough on it to fill the tank I up. mean, we've all been there. Right. Like, yeah. whoever, if you say you haven't, it's No, and, and, and you know what? I look back at those days, and I won't say I hated them when it was happening, but it was so stressful. It was so challenging. But now I look back at those days, and I was like, holy shit, man. I have fond memories of them, not hatred. I that fueled me, it got me going. Now, do I want to go back there? I still we put we go there just at a different level. We put ourselves at risk, but my ATM card works now. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's just it's just it's just a little different. <laughs> you get it right. You're laughing. Is that? And so, with that being said, um, we spoke yesterday about the impact you're making uh, to go to the next level. How important is for you to see these guys? How, how much has your life changed now watching people come into your shop for supplies versus a detail service? And 
do you do you take that home at night when when you when a when a guy or a gal comes into the shop and you see they're struggling a little bit? Does it bother 100, you? One hundred percent. Because yeah. I, I knew where, like, they're coming from. Mm-hmm. Like, I know what it is to start not have nothing. I didn't have money to, to have insurance in the beginning, mm-hmm. right? You know, charging the thirty-five dollar, fifty dollar washes. It's like when guys come in, it's like it's more than just them coming in to buy products. It's more of, man, let me see how I can help them in their business, right? right. Give them the opportunity that I was blessed enough to have, you know, coming up and you know within the industry. So it's pretty. It's I, I enjoy that process a lot. So you've got relationships with a lot of uh, key figures and key companies mm-hmm. in the industry. Um, you want to go into that? It's not not on our program. We don't. Hey guys, we don't script this. All I do is get an outline. You can see I'm looking at it every once in a while. As half of what we've talked about is already it wasn't even on here. You know, yeah. which is cool. So you know, it's it's crazy because is a lot of people have the opportunity in front of them and don't realize that they do right. So it's just, again, it's about building a relationship with different manufacturers just to have that relationship, right? And, you know, I've been blessed enough to be able to work with some of the companies like Flex, you know, Buff and Shine, oh, Auto Geek, and right. then I have different suppliers. And it's like, you know, I do, you know, my social media and marketing side of things. And it's, you know, that helps me diversify my portfolio well, somewhat. Yesterday you know? we're sitting here and you guys, I don't know if you caught it or not, but he takes a phone call towards the end of the day. Bob Phillips, president of PNS calls. Yeah. Just a bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> he, gives, he gives you crap too. Uh, and, and it's cool to see a, a guy that's come up in a relatively short time. Mm. You, you think of that, you're not even 10 years in and uh, you've, you've made an impact. Um, so, so with those companies, you've got some amazing clients. I mean, yeah. you've got, you've had, you know, and, and again, what you'll find with these clients, we've had them through the years. Some of them really do connect with you. And other ones, you're a service mm-hmm. provider. You know, but during that, I know you've called me up and said, hey, man, such and such said this. How 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 much has it helped you to watch other successful people? Is it have you been able to take and, and watch them and through osmosis? Oh, 100 okay. percent. OK, 100 percent. Give us an example. Again, not scripted. Can you give us an example? We there's not a particular you know person or scenario. It's just is I learned through other people's experience, too. You know, mm-hmm. it's like what they go through is. You know of what they how they relate to different manufacturers and and so forth. But it, there's not a particular moment, but I do learn from from the rest. So it, it's funny because when I set out, um, I've I've worked and you have mm-hmm. probably you guys from Miami have done it. He's, he's, you work with the, the the billionaires, not just the millionaires, the billionaires. I learned really quick. I didn't want to be a billionaire, and and people will say why. I look at what they've had to do and. I just, that's just not my wheelhouse, you know? I just want to be happy and comfortable. Hey, listen, like, I, you know, that's, it's, really it's a great it. place as we're looking at, you know, with you with your, your you know, your daytime job. Mm-hmm. I, I see people, and I mention it all the time because it's no freaking lie, dude, is that, you know, some people think you live forever in this, in this body you've got right now in this business. And we can tell you from our life experiences, you know, in military, you know, your other job. Some people are snuffed out way early, and sometimes you, there's no control over it. They leave their house, go into their job. They're happy. They're going to come home with their kids. They've got a, a play that night, and somebody hits them, yep. and game over. <clears throat> and so I, I tell people the reason why I didn't want to become a billionaire is I knew – I watched those individuals. I got one of my really good mentors and friends that's a, a billionaire several times over, and he's happy. He's a happy guy, but he shared with me what it cost him. I don't want that. I don't want that in my life. I had a little taste of it. I let that brew into me and it was brewing heavy when I met him and he could see it was making me angry. You know, it was making me resentful. It was making me a lot of things. And I had to check myself. I was honest with these guys went through counseling back in 2011 to get my head right. It was at a real low spot and it was chasing that freaking that dollar um, that did it because I found out real quick. You know, my addiction is William. You know, I'm addicted to him. Um, but, you know, success became my drug. And I didn't have a drug. I didn't have a – I'm not addicted to these. I can give them up tomorrow. I, you know, I don't have to have this. Coffee's – it's not a daily addiction, but it's – Yeah. <laughs> coffee's probably pretty there. You know, a couple other things we don't want to talk about because we'll keep it G-rated. Uh, you know, but it's – it's look at Chris. is like going, oh, God. Uh, I'm just, you know – I'm just waiting for uh, the internet to shut us down, you know? 
Anyways, if it doesn't shut Joe Rogan down, but boy, talk about that. You talk about society going after that dude. You know, you look at what happened. So hold that thought for a second. Write it down and bring it up. Write it down. Take them texting, but you okay, say it. say it. As quickly as you can earn it, you can lose it. Absolutely. Amen. Thank you for adding it. As quickly as you can make it, you can lose it. And 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 I can tell you this, if you're smart you're, and you're wise, you won't lose it all though. You know what I'm saying? Is that your risks become bigger, but your pot, your support pot becomes bigger. And you don't risk that whole pot anymore. I remember when I was young, when I was your age, fuck, dude, I was rolling. Excuse me, I'm not supposed to say that. I was rolling, I'm, I'm, and not because I'm not supposed to. Is I'm trying not to. But I, I, I remember rolling everything. I mean, and I had kids, I had, and I'm still, I'm just, I'm risking it all, you know? And I look back on that. And there's the regrets I learned. And what I've learned, I can share with others now. I wish, wish I would have been a little wiser not to do it. But now, um, you know, I didn't lose it all. But, ooh, that pot, that pot got really light. I mean, it went to a jar. It was no longer a pot. And you could rattle it, you know. The, the dollars were gone. There was coins left, you know. But we made it. You know, we oh, yeah. made it. Oh, yeah. And, and so, what... what we're going to go away some some takeaways before you do that your favorite favorite cigar if you had to pick one out just one okay two or three all right so so i honestly i keep in between mostly two which is my father's cigar and casa Cueva cigar mm -hmm. they they sell you know they have some of the best quality cigars you can smoke you can, they do no they honestly and, and they really they've, they've been really good to us we've had yeah. them on projects with us they're actually the you know they sponsor the cigars for air force one yep. so Good cigar. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm right with you. Just those, those are two of my favorite. And then um, pretty much anything Drew Estate. I mm. love Drew Estate cigars yes, sir. because it's a mellow cigar. And I, I'm going to probably get slaughtered from the serious cigars. I like I, I like a Cuba Cuba. Um, it's a, I, I do. It's a dessert mm. cigar. Look at they're all leaving. <laughs> I do. I like it as a it's a nice sweet cigar. Really? I like some smoke acid. I like acid. Yeah, I like <laughs> acid cigars. Mark that yeah, I, I like acid cigars, man. I think they're really, I don't know. It's every, it's a beginner cigar. Hey, man, I've had, okay, hold on, hold on. I got to go back. My daughter came when she was, she was in the Marine Corps. She came home, I think it was my 50th birthday. She came home with an Opus X, an original Opus X. Mm. Okay, that she, she got over when she was in Europe or Asia or, or, or somewhere. And it was original. It was generation, like, you know, the, the big generation where it was the, the talk of cigar aficionado. I I got such a buzz off that cigar. I was out of my mind buzzed. <laughs> out of my mind. Okay, so here's another really cool fact that you guys, Cuban, this, you'll dig this. I don't know if I ever told you that. Uh, Archie Michigan. Look up the name. Archie was a cigar manufacturer uh, pre-embargo over in Cuba. He did, uh, he did, he had a candy, yeah. a candy, a candy manufacturing company and a cigar manufacturing company. Well, he had a whole wall. His garage was about 50 feet and it was all a humidor. The whole thing. Oh my God. Well, when I, as I got to know him a little better, Archie asked me to come in and smoke with him. So his wife briefed me. I had to dress up. I didn't have to have a suit on, but I had to have a sports coat on. I had to, I had to dress professionally. He's old school, right? Archie, unfortunately, is, is no longer with us. And Archie brought me in and he goes, Hey, son, how come you're always smiling? And I, we, I went, and he goes, Oh, all done. I know why you're always smiling. Your wife's younger than you, isn't she? You know what she is. He goes, you know why I know that? My wife's younger than me. You know. So we sit down, and as I walk into the smoking room, the first thing I see is a picture of him with John F. Kennedy having a cigar. Wow. Then the next picture is him and the entire Rat Pack, one off, and then one picture with all of them smoking a cigar. Didn't he invite you to his house one day? He and, did. Yeah. He did. And we we smoked in the smoking room. And he had set, he had every, from Eisenhower all the way up to Reagan, a picture of them having a cigar together. And I'm like sitting there and I'm going, okay, I think I just arrived. You know, I don't, I think I'm the poorest guy to ever sit with this guy and have a cigar. So as we're sitting there, we're buffing on it, right? I go, Archie, so, I mean, how many boxes of these do you have? There's enough glass in my lifetime. They're all pre embargo cigars, pre embargo. I said, what do they go for? And he goes, oh, I think the last time I gave some to Arnie, as Schwarzenegger, he goes. You know, I think he got uh, about about uh, three a stick. 
and I, I sat there for a second because I know it wasn't three dollars. And I said, I'm smoking a three thousand dollar cigar, and he goes, You are enjoy it. And he was almost saying, like, you're never gonna get a fucking another one, you know, <laughs> because you know, I, I watched the scars, you know. And so I sat there, but you know, that was a pretty damn good cigar. Oh, and I was, bu- I'd have to come pick me up. I couldn't drive. I was bust out of my mind, man. Never done drugs, but I imagine it kind of felt like doing drugs. Um, so, coffee, coffee, coffee in this is. You, you, you know, I've always, there's either, you know, whiskey or cognac or, or like Cuban coffee, but like the uh, American coffee with cigars just goes right. Mm-hmm. It does. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. Cuban, Cuban coffee in there is pretty good too. Yeah. Okay. So, let's go to your takeaways. Um, favorite book? Can you name one or two? Oh, uh, I'll name a few actually. Um, you know, when I first started the business, I, I got into you know reading and audios. Um, the Ten X Rule by Grant Cardone. Well, hold um, on. So, can we say it? Yeah, that's fine. So, Grant Grant was one of your customers. Yeah. So as soon as soon as I finished his book, you know, I, I also got a video from Steve Harvey, but we'll go with that later. Um, I was like, right, I need to make this guy my client. I really do. So I just started tagging him on pictures. And so one day he commented and liked on it. And then I messaged him and he replied, all right, you know, my assistant. Wow. So, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to put, I've never said this publicly, but because you, you just mentioned his name, Glenn Stearns, he was, I was on the program undercover billionaire with Glenn. Glenn invited me in. He's, he's got true billionaire. Um, hey, hey, Glenn, if you're watching is I'm the one that told you about Grant Cardone and the discovery channel didn't know, anything about grant cardone until i mentioned him on a on a production meeting and so grant if you're watching the reason why discovery called you is because moi mentioned your name and he's the one that kept bragging about you so grant yes, you got to come on the podcast so does he do cigars huh does, does oh grant, yeah yeah okay yeah, grant yeah, let's yeah. go have, let's have a cigar i'll yeah. come to you i'll, I'll make I'll it easy nice. I'll, I'll go to Miami, right yeah so, yeah so so if i have if i have three books i could recommend to anybody well I, 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 I'll, let me go to four it'll be the 10x rule um, by Grant Cardone, Extreme Ownership by Jocko Wilkins, oh. um, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, mm. and Profit First. Mm. Mm. Those Great four books. books, if you if you read or listen to mm. those four books and your mindset doesn't change after those four books, go find a job at McDonald's. It it's <laughs> like it's the truth. Like I'm sorry. No, it it um I'll tell you, Michael Barnett, my a good friend of mine, uh, he just wrote a book, it's sitting over there. Uh, that's another great one, but all those are great books. I live off of, I want to tell it, tell you right now is that a lot of people say this is that Jocko's book changed my life. And here's why extreme ownership is I've always owned shit, but it's extreme ownership. There's a difference between I learned ownership before I read Jocko's book. I had ownership in my life, but I would extreme. say now I have extreme ownership mm-hmm. and 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 I still don't get it 100. percent That's why I reread, I'm, I reread the book. I, I'm I'm in a multiple reads of the book. And every time I read, it's like the Bible. Every time I read it, as I mature in business and life, I get something new out of it. And so that to me is one of the most important books in the world. I've listened to each one of those books multiple times. Mm, mm, mm. What's something you love to do? Anything in the world that you haven't. Ooh, something that you haven't done yet in life that you'd love to do. I probably suck at it, but I want to get into golf. Do you really? I don't know. I totally just, suck at it. Like and I used to play baseball when I was younger, so I swung like a baseball bat. So right. Like I, you know, is is more of a of a mental focus it is. type of sport. It's, harder it's like I enjoyed the challenge, right? Yeah. So it's like once things, you know, I, I'm gonna take some golf lessons. You know, you know who's a good around, golf, you know? golfer that changed the, <laughs> the, the, the. We were at Top Golf. Yeah. And Bob Phillips and I are not. Well, no, top golf, I'm pretty good. Yeah, yeah. that's that's yeah. as far as it goes. Well, it is. That's that's how I. But it it's goes. funny because Keith DePless is a really good golfer. He's one of those that he's got his little foot up and he's got his hands all placed right, four, you know, and he hits it and the fuck is right where it wants to go. Well, Bob Phillips and I are just trying to murder the ball. We're trying to we're trying to hit the back net every single time. Well, he starts working with Bob, and I don't know it. I'm on the other side at top golf, right? And all of a sudden, Bob gets his foot action like looking good. I'm like, hold on, dude. How the hell did you change that fast? He goes, well, Keith showed me. So I'm like, hey, get over here, dude. You know, get over, <laughs> get over here. Show me how to look like. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get it. So I just started murdering so, the so ball. So I, I want to wait until, you know, I could, I'm could. i going to start taking some golf lessons at the Trump Ooh. and Doral, So Okay. <laughs> Say what's on your hat because we're going to – we might as well – Yeah, because some people may interpret it wrong. but Oh, yeah. Let, let's get a close-up of that thing. 
Okay, so <laughs> make me feeling great. Yeah, yeah. So it, it is. It's that, <laughs> not the other one, uh, which I don't give a shit. Um, how do people? How do people connect with you? Oh you man, they, they could go either on on Facebook or Instagram at Miami Lux Detail Supply, mm -hmm. and that's it. Um, all platforms. TikTok. That's right on. Yeah. yeah, it's and if you're in Florida, seriously, screw going to Disney. If you're a car person, go to the shop. You know, it's really cool. Um, we made a plan out for him yesterday. He's going to start doing some new cool, cool shit. I, I can't wait to see the twist you bring to that. I'm not even going to say what it is. Don't, don't say it right now. No, I, I just, so, you just, know, just, if, just execute if, it. If I, throw, if I could throw something in, into the mix is, you know, I encourage, you know, business owners just to embrace their business, their brand and where they're from. You know, it's like Miami. I don't care who in detailing goes to Miami. That's my city. Yeah. That's yeah. my city. And, no. and I'll go against anybody on that. Yeah. You know, I embrace it. And you go to my shop. You have, it Greg, is. you have Greg the Flamingo. It's, yeah. You have, you know. <laughs> no, it's, it, and that's what I dug about it is you went local. I mean, you went, the flavors there. And, you know, all of us, I mean, I come up I come up from the time of Miami Vice being on TV, right? And that was my only, I took my first business trip. I was telling these guys what happened on my first business trip oh, yeah, to, yeah. to Florida. It wasn't Miami, though, but I, I did drive down on that trip because I'd never seen Miami. I'm young, right? Oh, my God. If you haven't seen, and, and. There's Miami, and then there's the other part, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Across go, the bridge, Miami. yeah. Go to, and, and honestly, I went oh, all you, parts. You of got it, Greg you know? the flamingo there. Yeah, there you go. There's, uh, there's, there's the picture. Yeah. cigar, some Cuban coffee. Yeah, and so it's yeah. just like a oh, Cuban coffee, dude, is addictive. You guys, if you're a coffee lover, you've got to have Cuban coffee, and you got and they got it. You got to have somebody that really knows how to make Cuban coffee. Yeah. Woo! You want to have that <laughs> a cigar? Oh man, buddy, you're gonna be you're gonna be loaded <laughs> up. Man. You'll have a good day. You'll have a good day, yeah, and and, sure. and so um, you know it it's 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 pretty cool if you guys and I think that I'm going to pay tribute. So I'm going to give some takeaways in addition to what we talked about books and everything else. I think what Williams really done a good job at is taking and creating his brand, as you guys just mm -hmm. saw. We're wearing it right now, but I think what Williams done is without even anybody saying anything to him, is he's created a personal brand. Is that uh, when I think of you, I don't think of Miami Lux. I think of William Lara is I think that you've become a personality within your brand. And I, I think more people need to do that. I really, as you guys connect with anybody watching, <clears> if you own a business is, is your, you know, he's done a great job. You guys probably first related to Miami Lux, but how much, and you guys are actual customers. How much do you relate to that name versus William? It's because of William. Why I go to the business. You guys just heard that. It's because yeah. of William, he goes to the business. And so I think that, you know, we have fun with William and, and, and Williams created such a personality within our group that, you know, and you're going to create people that don't like you because you're eccentric, I just you're don't care. unique. There you go. You don't care. <laughs> you know, it's, people, it's funny because like, like, you know, business life. And Steven's like, still smelling his finger. He just put it up and went, <laughs> and went and to you, you know, it, it, it's funny. Like, like, I was like, sitting in first class and you didn't even recognize <clears> it. You know, <throat> I don't like you very <laughs> but, but what said, happens? <laughs> but what, you know, it's like, like you said. It, you said it earlier. Like you know, if it doesn't benefit me financially, physically, or emotionally, I could care less. I don't care. And my business and my life started improving so much better when I started doing that. Yeah. yeah. To another level. Hey, listen, I'm I'm always going to do above the board business wise, but if I've got a competitor, it's they're putting. And this is how I used to think as a young dad, is they're putting Nikes on all their kids, or I'm putting Nikes on all mine. So if one of us is going to pay less, it's not going to be me. Oh, no. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be me. Is I'm going to always and I and I don't undercut. I always price wise, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we always offered affordable quality. You know, we had a working class, but we we were pretty much the highest the highest priced service provider, and mm -hmm. we had we have we had a lot of businesses in different industry. We are never the cheapest. You know, a lot of people don't know this. We started up an executive protection company that moved into executive transportation, that moved into uh, airport shuttle, that moved into uh, ski, backcountry skiing and, and river rafting shuttle. We bought another company out. And then I was like looking at the taxi companies and I'm going, hey, man, they're pieces of shit. I need to start a taxi company up that's high end. And we did. And guess who we were? Number one. And it was a, it was a, it was a cheaper service, right, than all the other companies I own. But it was a lot more expensive than the regular taxis because we didn't do the drunk crowd. We didn't go out and sit in town. Well, then we had to because we we're missing out because even the drunks that wanted to throw up in our van, they wanted us. 
And so what we did is we had one van, all-wheel drive Toyota, dedicated to the drunk, the drunk crowd. And we just put a car condom inside of it. It was all plastic. And and, and it, it just it was. It was just it was all it was all they don't recognize. Yeah, they don't, I don't think it was, yeah, it was throw up proof. Exactly. It was just rinse and go, rinse and go. I don't think Chris is gonna allow us to do my podcast again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I, I I'm pretty sure there's a URL we need to purchase right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So hey, we uh <laughs> We want to take and we want to thank uh, Double Black Team PNS, you know, for for making all these happen. Um, and it's it's really an honor. One of the things is I, I always try to end with grab me that bottle of shine all right behind it. You know, right now we're going through a weird time, and not not to make this a a, a broadcast, but I'm going to make it a broadcast right now. Um, some of the dressings are really hard to get a hold of, so people have been hitting me up. Shine all is readily available. It's a water based dressing. Uh, yeah, exactly. Somebody somebody just found a gallon of dynamic that's walking away from it. But, you know, if you haven't tried Shine All, uh, try it. It's a good interior dressing, exterior dressing. And let me tell you something. I started using Shine All. I've been using Shine All for years, especially mm -hmm. for a mobile guy. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best dressings you can use for the price. You can't even with an increase. You can, st you can still get a good bang for your buck. Oh, you do. It's, and it's good on engines, interiors. You can dilute it, mm -hmm. change it all around. You can have a nice matte finish that's on the Chevelle, or you can have something that's a little more extreme. So. Hey, by the way, uh, before we wrap up, uh, you know, Jody Cedric asked where his shirt is. Mm. So, um, uh, Miami Lux shirts are in current um, production. Um, I'm actually coming out with, with, a, with a pretty cool theme that I think you guys will enjoy. Hey, oh, this yeah. is what we give Jody. Jody with Road FS. I promise, Jody, I got you. Oh, and, and, and check this out. I'm going to bring it up on the screen. This is something that Jody just typed in. I wanted to share with everybody. My, I, I'm, I'm too far away from these young guys. That's right. Jo Jody wrote, uh, "Embrace who you are and don't try and be someone else. Authenticity pays in the long run." If, if I might just say something on that, you know, and I've learned, you know, not just being through, you know, in the mafia and, and in the industry, is don't worry about being the next Justin Labato or, or Renny Doyle. Worry about being the first you. Ah, amen. It is, uh, and, you know. and let me tell you, okay, Jody and I have been friends for freaking twenty years. I mean, we've known each other a long time. Um, in Idaho, we we had our detailing shop up in Idaho. People go, really? Got you do detailing in Idaho? Look who's based out of Idaho. Road FS, you know, is right there. Rad Company's right there. Who would ever guess? Right when I was doing my exit out of there, it becomes a freaking powerhouse. And then the reason we moved back is my mom's sick, and she doesn't want to move to Idaho. On her deathbed, the last day I talked to her the day before, I go, hey, mom, any regrets in life? I mean, I was really – my mom was coaching me through her death. My mom changed even after she's been gone. She has been such a major influence with what she left me. And on her deathbed, she goes, yeah, I got one major regret. And I was like getting ready to take in some wisdom, right? And here's my hardcore time, mom. And she goes, you know when you wanted me to move to Idaho to be closer to you guys? And you moved here back to California because I didn't want to leave. So, yeah, and she goes, yeah, I wish I just would have went to Idaho. And I was like, oh, damn, you know, <laughs> holy crap. But everything for a reason, you know, and it's I know Steven's sitting here because he, he really he recently lost his dad and I just hit a, a chord with him. And it usually you're going to get me all mushy too, dude. But you look at what our parents and and this wasn't right. even. Hey, what what's your mom look like? <laughs> I'll pass. Uh, uh, you know where I'm going with this. We got one of our one of our good friends in the group. So Renzo, uh, I'm step down number one. Ibn, 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 yeah, his, his mom and I have a, a special thing going, um, and we don't don't take that literal. It's just a it's a hot button with Renzo, so we always hit him with that. We're going through a camera one day, and he's showing me something. And he goes, he skips through his camera to show me a picture. I said, Whoa, hold on, man. Who's that hottie? He goes, dude, that was my mom. I said, Oh, mom. Wow. <laughs> and he's like, dude, he was grossed out, man. He was just having it. So, hey, uh, like, share, make a comment, suggestions, go over, follow uh, Paul Will. Uh, he's a good guy. And, uh, dude, we got yeah. a cigar to finish. We got some training to do. We got I'm going to share one more thing before we end. You know, the title is Small Business, Big Thinking. You'll never have a big business if you don't think big. Mm. And big doesn't need to necessarily be big. It can be small and profitable. Yeah. Amen. And, and 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 afford you the life that you want. You know, that's the most important thing, guys. Mm -hmm. You can still listen. Is you can have a one or two man shop mm -hmm. and become a millionaire. It's just gonna take you a while. 
And I'm going to tell you, there's some one and two man shops that that have hit multi million dollar values in their personal life without being a big shop. And they've, they've done it in 10 years. Well, that's a fraction of the time that it took me, you know, and so it's doable. You don't have to be big. You just have to be good. You got to put your brand out there. You got to you got to save and put money away. You can't be fooled. Don't. So many of us are poor dudes. Even if we didn't grow up poor, we have a poor mentality. We have a poor man's thinking. We have a poor man's judgment. We have a poor, you know, poor, 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 mm. poor. Is stop thinking like that. You know, think that you can be what you want. I love the whole vision that you've got. And and both of us buy into the same people. You know, we watch the same. We mm -hmm. listen to the same. And and I listen to everybody. But you know, it's 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 obviously you know it's made an impact on your life. At at fifty six years old, is I I'm sitting here taking notes from these guys this week. You know, something that each one of you do, I take away from every person that comes through this training and I'll put it into the next training. I'll put it into my life. Your calmness, you know, of doing what you do for a living. Is it, it's, I thought about that this morning when everything kind of went bad with the camera. I thought of you. Oh, wow. I was like, hey man, he's going to walk in here. I can't be a wreck. <laughs> Seriously, how cool is that? You know, that, I, really cool. I, that I took something away. Mm -hmm. Is that each one of you, I love who you are. You're just who you are. You're such a young dude, and you're such a young dude to be as <laughs> cool and collected as you guys are, and have your shit together. Listen, this is a generation right here. He's included. All these guys are. You want to say this generation's bullshit? Bull. I'm going to call foul, man, because this gen, these guys that I'm sitting here now, are they're they're as good as any generation I've seen. And I think that we're listen the greatest generation, the generation that fought World War II. I think we're seeing a revamp and a rebirth in the current twenty-something year olds. Small, small percentage, but it doesn't matter what percentage is. I think we're seeing a rebirth of greatness. I think they're seeing bullshit with our government, bullshit with the social media, bullshit with the whole, you know, carrot in front of you, you know, and trying to get you to work freaking 900 hours. Well, you, you already do that. So <laughs> we got to change that habit. You need to smoke some more cigars. You know? <laughs> Yeah, do you? More mellow, mellow yeah. yeah. <laughs> or something more I'm gonna, have a, I'm gonna have a cigar event at the shop. Mm. <laughs> we'll start to it out. We'll have yeah. to do that next year. Yeah, when I'm down there. Yeah, it. that'd be fun. Let's do it. All right, guys. Hey, thanks a lot. Um, you know, it's uh, been an honor, dude. I'm gonna shake your hand right now. I'm actually gonna give you a hug. I'm gonna give you a hug. <laughs> and so, uh, hey, follow this guy. It's a lot of fun. You guys, thanks. <laughs> Wish these guys the best. Uh, stick in there, guys. Anybody that's struggling, if you're growing and you're huge and you're trying to get over that next turtle, it's gonna happen for you. Uh, in the event that it, you're brand new and really struggling, uh, endure that pain and, and actually embrace it because when you look back, it's going to be some of the best times you've ever had. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. You take care, okay? We'll see yeah. you next time. Have, have a good one, guys.